So after I get done cleaning the uh, pool out, I went ahead and plugged the salt filter back in and I got the code 91. You know, the uh, low salt light came on, you know, and this time it just came on and just stayed on. Um, so I unplugged it, plugged it back in, did it again three times. It took about 10 minutes for it to come on, but it did finally come on each time. So I'm going to add some salt. And according to the instructions, uh, when you get the code 91, it's time to uh, add about 45 pounds of salt. So what I tend to do, because when I go into the uh, when I go into the store and buy a bag of salt, you know, usually you expect it to be, you know, loose and ready to go in the pool. But you know, a lot of times it's not. And what I've got. This time it's a bunch of lumps, and I've gone through and I've screened it once, and it's sitting here, so I'm going to screen it again real quick before I take it out and put it in the pool. I'm going to scoop it a little bit at a time, pour it through my screen. And see, that's what I don't want. I don't want those lumps in the pool, so I'm just going to keep on scooping it. It only takes a couple minutes to do this. It's, to me it's worth it. This is a 12 mesh screen. It's going to pour itself through. I've already strained this once, so that must have just been what I put on top. But I've strained it once. Oh gosh, I don't know. It's been like six months ago when I bought I bought a couple bags of salt, and then I uh, had to put a little bit of salt in back then, so I did it to to that and got some of it out, and then I strained it all into here. And I'm just double checking now. When I first did it, the whole thing I had a big old giant clump like this, and I had to stir and break it up with a screwdriver, you know, and get it to go down. And generally I wear gloves, and I've got a pair of gloves behind me, but because of, so far this looks pretty good, because I've already done it once, it's about ready to go. It's got a few small ones. And that's it. Now I got an empty bucket. Yeah, I don't want these going in the pool, you know. That's good enough. I'll finish grinding it up and throw it in the pool. So there you can hear the dreaded code 91 blinking on and off with the alarm. And it says low salt. Generally when it says low salt, you know your electrodes are dirty. But we just cleaned those like two days ago now. And they still look great. So we're going to throw some salt in. Okay, about 20 minutes later, I started this up about 10 minutes ago, and just that fast, we're back in the normal operation. So when I put the video out on the salt system, and I had a little corrosion going on in the electrodes right here, one of the guys' very first comment on the form was, why don't you put some dielectric grease on there? And that's a great idea, you know? So I've got some dielectric grease. Here we are at 5 a.m. again, and I've got the dielectric grease. What I'm going to do is just take a touch, just a little bit. Okay, and put on each one of the prongs. Just to make sure. 
Just, just, just a little. I mean, just hardly any. Okay. You don't want much. Just want a very little bit. Just enough to cover them. But anyway, so that's it. Just a, just a little bit. I mean, just enough to barely coat them and to make it from not sticking. I'll put a little bit of, in there on both sides, just a touch. There, that's it. Oh, yeah. Slides on much better. There. And that's it. Just that easy for putting a dielectric grease on. You know, good stuff. I mean, there's all kinds of different brands. You can put all different kinds. Probably could just use Vaseline for that matter, but, you know, I'll use dielectric grease, put it on there, and I won't have a sticky connection ever again when I go to take it apart.